Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you an example of CAM in SolidWorks where there are some extra things that you need to do besides just defining the machine, stock, so on, and extracting machinable features. So I want to show you that when you have chamfer like this, you have fillet like that, and if your stock is a little bit thicker than the part, right, so you have to do some face milling on the top surface, those are not the typical thing that this command extract machinable features will recognize and will give you simply the operation plans and you can generate toolpath and everything. So you have to manually add those and I want to show you how to do that. So the goal is to manually add operation plans for chamfer, fillet, and face milling. That's what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and do the simple operations that I showed you in one of my previous videos and go ahead and define the machine, right? So we pick the simple mill, select, and the crib, we pick this inch system, uh, inch tools that is not empty and it's not advanced for assemblies, it's a single part. And we should be good for post-processor and anything else. We don't need any rotary or uh, tilt axis since this is not fourth or fifth, uh, four or five axis CNC. For coordinate system, let's say we pick it on this bottom uh, left corner with X, Y, Z, the way that they're shown. And then stock here is the part that I make the stock a little bit thicker. So I go ahead and for the stock, instead of this bounding box, I use this one predefined bounding box. And then in the predefined, the thickness of this part is one inch. Okay, so this is four by six by one. Now here, I go ahead and the thickness in the Y direction, I pick it as 1.2. You see here, I did it as 1.2. So what it does is, if I don't do this offset, it goes ahead and adds half of that extra thickness. The extra thickness here is 0.2 inches. It adds that half of it, which is 0.1, below the part, half of it above the part. So now, if you look from the side view, 0.1 inch is above the part, 0.1 inch is below the part. But if you give it a 0.1 inch offset, now your stock is like this. The bottom of it is the same as bottom of the part. The top of it is 0.2 inch uh, thicker, correct? And let's say this is what you have for the stock. And this top surface of it is very important. It has to be relatively good. So you have to do some face milling on this um, 0.2 inches and remove that material. So this is how I created a thicker stock, okay? So let's uh, go ahead and work with this. There we go. And then uh, here we pick this top surface as the surface that the tool is approaching or normal to which is approaching to the part. Now look here, I say extract machinable features. Look, the only thing that it can detect is this uh, basically called a, a brown or this slot. That's all it can find. So if I say generate operation plan, it creates a roughing for it, a contour for it, and uh, generate toolpath and simulate toolpath. Look here, so let me slow it down a little bit. That's all it will detect as a machinable feature, which is basically the slot. And here it's doing the roughing, and then it is going to do the contour. There we go. Done. So this is all it can detect. You see clearly it did not remove the extra 0.2 inch thickness with face milling. It did not do the fillet with the contour milling and it did not do the chamfer with another uh, contour um, milling. Okay, so you see it does not recognize those. So if you want to do that, you have to do some extra operations. And this is how I did it in this other part. So, and I show you how to do that, but uh, let me get rid of this. So here, if you look, I have created a face milling followed by a contour milling, which is to basically create the um, fillet and then another contour filling, which is this time for the chamfer, then the rough and the uh, contour milling for the slot command. So uh, look here, if I simulate it for you, there we go. You see the face mill comes in, 
and it will remove 0.2 inch thickness of the material on the top which is that green portion that you can see and once that is over now you get a relatively good surface on the top you can start doing the next operation which is the fillet and it's done with its own tool here you see now it's doing the fillet cut now here it's doing the uh, countersink tool to do the chamfer as you can see and once the chamfer is over it is going to do the um here it's going to do the uh, roughing and then the contour for the slot There we go. So now that the simulation is good, of course, you can go ahead and post process it or save it as CL file, right? The tool motion, or you can, as I said, post process it and save it as like CNC code, NC code, or any other type of code that you want. Okay, so here we go. Done, and you can save it. But how do you do that? To show you, let's go back to this part that uh, the, those features were not recognized properly. And let's go ahead and show you how to add it manually. So here you see we have the rough and the contour for the slot. So now we right click here under uh, mill part setup one, group one. And I can go ahead and uh, add a two and a half axis mill operation. And this time I want to do a face mill. And so I pick the face mill that I have in the tool crib. And here I need to add the feature for it and tell it to reduce that 0.2 inch extra thickness of the stock. So I go under features. And since I don't have any feature for that, I say create a feature, two and a half axis. And the type instead of pocket slot or something is a face feature. What face determines the, the end of the uh, face milling? That's this surface here. And then for end condition, I click, and there are different options here for blind, up to face, everything. I pick this one, up to stock. So from that face up to the stock, to the top of the stock, is where I need to do face milling. And you see the thickness is already determined, 0.2 inches. That is where I need to remove material. And I OK that. And okay, this one. So now it is going to give me the operation parameter. So here the tool is already selected. If you want, you can modify the tool here and you can modify the feed rate. You can modify the spindle RPM. You can modify uh, basically the passes and everything for the um, basically the face milling about the nc operations and so on but right now let's say these are good as they are i okay that so you see now this operation is added but here if i go ahead and generate the toolpath and simulate guess what happens since this face mill is after those two operations what it does is first it creates the milling operation for the uh, basically the um, slot then it does the face milling which is not what you do in reality you first remove the extra thickness then you do the milling operation so you have to reorder the operations here you have to grab this face mill and bring it up here on the top of the list so that's the first operation that will be done now you generate toolpath now you simulate and now hopefully everything is going as should look here you see, the face milling is the first operation. First, I guess in four passes, that green material, which is 0.2 extra thickness, is going to go away. Then, into that orange part, you start doing the milling operation for the slot. Now, what you probably want to do in reality is first do the uh, fillet and the chamfer, then do at the end the milling, okay? Especially the chamfer, you probably want to do the chamfer, then the milling. Now, the fillet can be done later. But clearly here, you need to do the chamfer also before this rough and contour. 
And as I said, you also need to do the fillet. So how do you add those? Very similar procedure. You right click here and then again, go to two and a half mil operation. And this time those are under contour mill. So you go to the contour mill and the tool that you have to pick for the fillet is uh, what it is for a, a fillet, um, basically, um, or we call it the corner one. So you first look here, see if you have the tool crib. Okay, so your tool crib has flat end, flat end, right? You have the center drill, right? You see, you don't have any of those tools that are used for um, basically for creating the fillet. So you need to add a new tool. And here you need to find the one that is for um, fillets. And if you look here, it's this one, corner round. So you click on corner round and the fillet radius for here is a quarter inch. So you need to pick the one that is a corner, a quarter inch in radius like that and you okay that. Now that tool is added and now you can go and say which feature is it that you need to have. And this feature here, okay, so um, you can say create a feature and in this case, it's the perimeter of the part. You see it's around the part. So if I say perimeter, let's see if it does the job, okay? So if I okay this, you see, if you look at these areas that it is gonna do it, that's exactly the area here that I want the material removed. Look here, let's look from the side. So I think that should do the job and we can always check it. So let's okay that for now and generate the toolpath and simulate and let's make it very fast uh, run there we go now there was one problem with it the problem was as you saw when it was trying to do fillet the tool went all the way down while well, you should only stay in this fillet radius which from the top of the stock is Basically, remember, we have 0.2 extra thickness and this radius is 0.25. So you only should, your tool should move down from the top of the stack 0 0.45, 0 0.45, not all the way down. So the tool should not go all the way down. Okay, so the way I modified it is I went inside this, right? You can double click in it uh, on it and go to the definition and go to feature options. And this option, this machining depth was 1.2. So what I did, I click on this one here, override machining depth, and I change it to 0.45. Okay, so now if you do it, the tool should not go that far down. And I grab this and put it right after this um, face mill here. So now it's going to do face, then fill it, then the slot. So let's create it again and the tool path. Let me make it a little bit slower. So, there we go. So it should not now go all the way down. There we go, you see? It stopped after it cut through the required part of the fillet. So you see the fillet is done, the slot is done, but as I said before the slot, we should have done the uh, chamfer. So let me show you also how to do the chamfer. And this is the last part. So here, to do the chamfer is very similar to fillet. We right click here, we go to two and a half mil operation. Again, it's a contour mill. And what we need to do is to add the tool for what we call countersink or countersunk. So we go and add a new tool and we go here and find the countersink. And this tool has this sharp, um, uh, basically edges with the angle that you want. In this case, this uh, chamfer is 45 degree and 0.25. So we're gonna go for a quarter and 90 degrees like this. 
and that is exactly what you want to get a 45 degree on each side of it with a quarter dimension so that's exactly the tool that you want you okay that and now that you have the tool you go for the feature and again you say i want to get the create feature and it's, this chamfer is not on the perimeter so you have to use two and a half access feature and the operation here is basically a um, cut okay so it's not an open pocket or corner slot or anything so i go with the uh, pocket operation and uh, this time you need to make sure the feature that you pick is correct so let's say if i pick here and then here and then here and then this one that's exactly defines the area over which the tool should be applied and i guess we should be good now just change this to up to stuck there we go let's see if this one does the job for us and i'm gonna okay this and okay the operation now here you see the machining depth is one so you're probably not gonna get exactly what you want but let's just first generate the toolpath and simulate it see what we are getting and then we will decide okay so if you don't know everything from the beginning it's fine you don't need to you can always experiment with it and find what is it that you want let's see what the chamfer does yeah it did do the chamfer but you see now the tool again although not cutting through the material but it's going further into the part okay so um, i don't think the tool needs to go that far down especially if you look at the last part of it look here the tool should not go somewhere like that this is wrong so you have to define properly the depth that the tool needs to go into the stock okay and this is wrong so you have to go back here and also you might want to bring it before the final end mill for the slot so i bring it right after the fillet so i go back here double click and try to edit that depth so i go to feature you see here it's uh, gray but if you click here it can overwrite it and as i said uh, similar to fillet this should be 0.45 that's how far the tool should go down not more than that and you see exactly the bottom of it matches the bottom of the chamfer so now i assume that if i do it it should be perfectly correct let's see there we go fill it beautiful chamfer beautiful and the milling roughing and then the contouring there we go. and if you just saw if that extra portion of that blue material that you saw like was a very very thin layer something like that is remaining you can basically bring your chamfer a little bit further down okay so you can move your chamfer a little bit further down your chamfer tool or do a little bit better job on the um uh, basically the milling for this and you're not gonna get that very very thin layer of the material as well okay but you clearly can see that you can get the part to do the operation the way you want and not initially just by recognizing that pocket. So hopefully the video was useful to you and I'm gonna see you in the next lecture. Thank you.